Another class two problem here. A golfer hits a ball and gives it an initial speed of 30 meters per second, ignoring any roll that the ball may get and assuming that the place where the ball lands is at the same level as the tee. It asks us three questions for that. It, um, we assuming that the place where the ball landed is at the same height level as the T. That is the part that tells us that it is a class two problem. Um, for what it's worth, you gotta read and figure out those things. Three questions. What is the maximum distance he can reach down the fairway? What is the tallest tree he could hit? Excuse me, he, he could hit over. There it is. What is the maximum speed of the ball at any point in its flight? Okay, three questions and kind of our standard picture here. What is the maximum distance he can reach down the fairway? We're looking to figure out this blue deal, blue arrow. Um, what is the tallest tree he could hit over? Well, uh, how high off the ground is he at apogee? And what is the minimum speed of the ball at any point in its flight? We'll examine that one last because that's more explanation than anything else. As always, we have to start by breaking our starting velocity up into its vertical and horizontal components. However, in this case, it did not tell us what angle we had. But it said, um, uh, what is the maximum distance he could reach? You'll recall from class Monday, uh, we discussed how you maximize the distance of your shot, your whatever your projectile is, and that is at 45 degrees. It's at 45 degrees that several things happen. Uh, you maximize your range. Um, and, um, well, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, other things, your velocity, vertical velocity goes to zero, a number of things. I was kind of getting ahead of myself, so let's just figure this out. That means for this angle theta, we need 45 degrees. Um, so that's 45 degrees. And this is 30 meters per second. Plug that in my calculator. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. 30 meters per second. And 45 degrees. When I plug those in my calculator, I get that the vertical displacement, excuse me, the vertical starting velocity is 21.21 meters per second. The horizontal is 21.21 meters per second. It should not it may surprise you that those numbers are the same, but they have to be the same at some point uh, in as you adjust your angle from zero up to 90. At zero degrees, the horizontal velocity is the entire velocity. At nine degrees, it's all vertical. So somewhere between that, they have to equal each other. We're better than 45. Another way of saying that is the sine of 45 is equal to the cosine of 45. And if you don't believe me, well, verify it in your calculator. Uh, so, 21.21 meters per second. And here, too. Um, it asks what the maximum distance down the fairway is. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out time to apogee, double it, and then uh, distance horizontally. So let's do that. Um, at apogee, the velocity is zero meters per second. And the acceleration, not only at apogee, but everywhere else is vertically, is minus 10 uh, meters per second squared. I am trying to figure out time, and I don't care about displacements, which leads me to dash. So let me. Give us a little running room and get a copy of dash out here. There's our copy of dash, and we, we're looking for time, so we've got to solve for delta t equals something. That is it solved. Now all we have to do is plug in the numbers as we know them and simplify, and we get that time to apogee is 2.121 seconds. That is not our answer, that is half of our answer. Um, the total would be twice that, so I'm not going to write it down in the vertical. I'm just over here in the horizontal. I want to write 4.242 seconds. That's the total time it's in the air. 
Um, so now we're interested in how far it went downrange. And again, this is zero. Always is, unless something is on fire. Um, we're going to choose to not care about velocity later horizontally, even though we know it to, because acceleration is zero, we know it to be 21.21. But from that, that'll lead us to violet with the first term, uh, excuse me, the second term equal to zero. There's violet, as I said, uh, no horizontal acceleration. So that term is zero. Then all we have to do is plug in the numbers as we know them. There are the particulars, Vs horizontal and time horizontal. And when I work that out on my calculator, it comes out to, I rounded a little bit, but not much. Uh, I rounded by, uh, by a centimeter and a half. So it comes out to 90 meters. And they measure golf course and yards, so I'd have to do that math. But uh, that would be something a little better than 90 yards. Okay, um, that is part A. We have it solved. The answer is 90 meters. We'll go ahead and write this here. Put it in the, oh, it's big, isn't it? Must be important. Uh, put it in a nice yellow box, and we're good to go. Um, B, what is the tallest tree it could, he could hit it over? Well, at Apogee, we can figure out what its, um, what its altitude is. Let's write Apogee time in here, 2.121 seconds. That's how long it took to get to Apogee. And now I'm curious what this distance is. I know four of these, so I can use any one I want. I choose, well, I can't use dash, which is what I usually go to because he's so easy to solve. So I'm going to use Bob. Bob's nearly as easy. There's Bob. Um, Got to scroll down just a little bit. Um, interestingly enough, and I can't, I'm sorry, I can't get this all in the shot. Oh, yes, I can, because I'm smarter than this computer of mine. There we go. Um, since VL is zero here, that makes this really easy to solve. Let's just substitute our numbers in and see what happens. I had to shrink that down just a little bit. Um, substituting our numbers in gives us that. And when we simplify, we get that the tallest tree he can get over is 22.49 meters. And that is our answer for B. Put a nice little yellow box around it just so. Uh, and lastly, we were asked a third question. What is the maximum speed of the ball at any point in its flight? Excuse me, the minimum speed of the ball. Well, at its launch, uh, when he when it just separated from the guy's club, its horizontal velocity was 21.21. Um, of course, that's what his horizontal velocity was throughout the entire flight. Anywhere in its trajectory, this number remained a constant. So you really need to ask, how does the velocity change vertically? Because um, that will determine um, where the velocity is really minimum. And you know it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as gravity sucks more and more of its velocity away until the point at apogee. That's the point where momentarily the velocity is zero. Now, to find the absolute velocity, th that is to combine those two, the horizontal and uh, vertical back together, uh, would take some trig, not even really complicated trig, but it just asks for the minimum, and the minimum is here at apogee where there is no vertical, there is only horizontal, so the minimum is 21.21, and it is at apogee. That is the answer to part C.